Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting of September 15th to order. And roll call, please. Or do I do the pledge first? I always miss it. Either way. Let's do the pledge. Pledge of allegiance. <laughs> Salute. Pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. This and conference will now be recorded. One nation, so under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Couch. Blades. Present. Bryant. Crump. Here. Tafoya. Here. Flores. Here. Navarro. Here. Lucenovich. Para. I am here. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Here. Scribner. Here. Bob Smith. I am here. Phil Smith. Here. Trujillo. Vasquez. And Peacock. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Any public comments see none special action item assembly bill 361 authorizing teleconferencing under conditions certain conditions miss napier yes thank you mr chairman and members of the committee this item is um, the item that allows us to continue to do remote teleconference meetings and the uh, term for this uh, resolution is September 15th to October 15th. And we're just asking that you approve and adopt resolution number 22-37. Thank you. Motion. Motion to approve. Support a second. Roll call vote. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Flores. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Para. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial. Oh, Whoops, I missed special presentation. Is that going to happen? Or? Yes, okay. they're on, they're on okay. virtual. Okay, I'm sorry. We have a special presentation, DTSC Equitable Revitalization Grant Program. Okay, hi everyone. Thank you uh, for having us today. My name is Tony Torres, um, and uh, I want to introduce Miriam Tasley Babasi. Uh, she is the manager in the Brownfields Development Division at DTSC. She's going to go through a presentation about our ECRG grant process and the funding available to help uh, public entities, municipalities, public agencies obtain funding to. Uh, address some of their uh, brownfield uh, property issues. Um, so, uh, Miriam, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Tony, and uh, thank you so much to um, invite us and have us be on the agenda today. We really appreciate the time. 
Uh, like Tony said, my name is Miriam Kazavabasi. I'm the Brownfield Development Manager for the Department of Toxic Substances Control. And we're here to talk to you today about our Equitable Community Revitalization Grant. This grant is um, uh, provides funding for assessments, investigations, and cleanups of contaminated property uh, that have the potential to be reused and revitalized for different purposes for the community. Um, I wondered if it's possible for me to share my screen because I would like to kind of um, show uh, our website and where you can find information, um, but I'm also happy to talk through it. Um, so we are the, um, uh, uh, sorry, the screen just changed it, threw me off for a little bit. So um, basically we have about $100 million uh, available um, uh, the application is going to open up in the uh, January timeframe, and um, we've got three different pots of money that people can apply for. There are community-wide assessments, which I, is going to be. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I uh, gave you this the screen. I think. Um, no, I'm still not a presenter. And so um, I'm not able to click on the screen icon to share my screen yet. Stand by, please. And um, in the chat, I went ahead and shared our website for every, 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 anyone who wants to click in it. Try that now. And Oh, yes, absolutely. Here I am. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me know if you guys are able to see that on your end. Yes, we can. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. So um, what I was saying is that we're in the process right now of opening up our second round of the Equitable Community Revitalization Grant. This flyer uh, is the first uh, sort of official piece of information that we're sharing in our second round. And I just got it um, approved and sent to me uh, via email uh, about an hour ago. So you guys are the first audience uh, taking a look at this particular flyer. Um, we are in the second of two funding rounds. This is uh, um, this funding is available for public entities, um, and and that's why I'm here today because uh, we think that um, the members of your cog uh, can take advantage of this funding. Um, nonprofits and tribes are eligible to apply. Um, like I said, we're going to be uh, providing guidelines by the end of December, and uh, we've got a link here, and I'm going to kind of walk you through our actual uh, website as well. These are some examples of the projects that we funded this go around. Um, the San Diego uh, State University has a nonprofit arm. Um, they have um, asked for money for us to do um, investigation work and assessment work for an area that's going to be transit oriented development. Uh, we've worked um, with the city of Linwood given them about $5 million for a, a cleanup in a specific uh, area that they'd like to build a grocery store uh, for a food desert, which is really exciting. Uh, Unity Council is a nonprofit organization that want to build affordable homes. Uh, and we're also working with the Yurok tribe uh, to create some park and open space in, in uh, Northern California. Um, I'm going to switch screens really quick and kind of show you where we are, how, um, show you a map of, of the projects that we have. Um, did we switch, switch screens to the map? I just want to make sure. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We're over there. Yes. Wonderful. And so um, if you look at the Kern County area and much of Central California, these dots represent. Um, the projects that we funded as a, as you can see we funded a lot of projects in the la county southern california area and we have some projects um, in northern california as well but um, we have virtually nothing in central in the central valley we know that the central valley has a lot of land that's impacted by former industry by agriculture 
um, by, by oil production work. And we know that you guys have the kind of sites that we can provide assistance on. Um, we're working with Tony's organization, the Center for Creative Land Recycling. Uh, they are able to provide free assistance to anyone who wants to have a conversation about getting ready to apply for these funds. Um, DTSC is also happy to start the conversation. Um, we think it's early right now, but early is the best time to get most of our attention. We'd love to meet with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to understand um, what your problem lands are, where you have properties, where you think you have uh, the need to reduce environmental uncertainties that overlap with some reuse planning that maybe has been put on the back shelf because you just haven't had the capacity or the funding to be able to, to take care of the environmental issues. And so uh, we really want to start those conversations and um, provide um, free help to be able to get you know, uh, Central California better represented in the next round. Um, our website has a lot of information on it. Um, our, we have a special page for like new applicants. And until we have the information on the new round, we have uh, created a little catalog of documents from the last round, like our guidelines, uh, last year's one pager, an example um, agreement, so you understand what that grant agreement is going to look like, and an example application, so you can see the questions that we asked last time. Now, all of this is subject to change because we are getting ready to um, launch the next round, but going through these documents will help um, everyone understand a little bit better what it is that you will be applying for and what it's going to take to make a strong application. And so there's you know, millions of dollars that are going to be available. Last year, we funded about 75 million, uh, last round, I should say, because those projects just began um, after July 1st. And, and this round, we have more, we have 100 million, but we really want to see a greater level of geographic representation in the grant, which means trying to do whatever it is that Tony and I can do to bring in more applications from your cities and your communities. Um, I think that's, that's um, all I had to share because I didn't want to just be talking at everyone. I want to see if Tony has anything else to add and I'd love to see if there's any questions or anyone who wants to set up maybe a separate meeting with us to, to uh, get, take a deeper dive and see how we can um, give you access to this funding. Yes, the only thing I would add, because I know we only have about 10 or 12 minutes total, is mm -hmm. that we uh, understand that applicants have lots of questions, um, have lots of documents to gather, uh, need, need assistance. So our uh, organization is available to all uh, potential applicants, even those that uh, you know start the process and realize maybe I'm not ready to apply, I'll apply, I'll apply later. That does, that's okay with us. And we offer uh, free of charge consultation. You can set up uh, a 30 minute time slot with us to ask questions and you can set up follow up ones, you know, to continue to have a dialogue. We want, you know, potential applicants to be prepared, ready, well informed when our application process does open up in January. So um, we wanna make that available. We can send information to Becky, who has been very gracious to correspond with me via email. Again, we're open to, um, you know, just starting a dialogue with you to hopefully pique your interest in this very uh, um, worthwhile grant process for entities. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, exciting stuff. Yes, we have brownfields that we've located, and we've gotten grant monies, you know, to find them and. But I haven't, this is the first time I've heard that, you know, grant money to actually clean them up. And so that's good. So, yes, if you can get us the contact info and then we can connect. Does uh, she, she supplied a website address on the chat. Um, I can read it to you if you like. Please I'd rather you email it to me. I don't, oh, I don't know if I. I'll, right I'll email it to you okay. uh, by okay. tomorrow. Yeah. I'll send it over, send the information. Okay. So would the city need the to own the property already or you, you would help purchase or how, how does it really work? Sure, that's a really good question. Um, we don't require ownership because we understand 
a lot of um, a lot of sites are kind of being purchased where uh, it's it's the the developer or the city who's trying to acquire the property. You do have to have access. Our money is just for our grantees to hire a consultant to do a cleanup or to do a investigation. We also pay and require regulatory oversight. So if you're working with a local agency or with DTSC as your oversight agency or even the water board, we pay for those costs as well. And so what you probably uh, might want to do is take a look at um, your brownfields inventory if you have one or you know people call it different things and um, see which ones you are planning to reuse because what we're what we're trying to do is that we're focusing on cleanup to build up right. what we found is that uh, you know we'll clean up a site but it sits there unused and then no one wants to touch it because they don't know that it's being cleaned up and so we want to find sites that are ready to start building up as soon as the environmental uncertainties are addressed or the cleanup is done. Right, you mentioned uh, one was for housing and so that would work, right? Yes, absolutely. We we had a lot of housing projects come in, a lot of affordable housing projects come in um, as grantees and and we're really happy and excited to be able to support um, safe, you know, reuse of, of a property for affordable housing in particular. Great. Oh, great program. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, if I can get the information, I'll definitely follow up, and, and we'll have the city of Bakersfield follow up with you, too. Yes, uh, I would like to get the information as well, please. Thank you. Yes, we will I will disseminate it out to, to your COG, and we thank you for the time today. So if the applications are due in January, when's the decision made? The decisions are made in June. Um, the application actually opens up in January. We close the application period in March. Then we have to go through the scoring process and the right. vetting of all the applications. And we'll make decisions by mid to late June. And the um, authorization to spend happens as soon as the grant agreements are signed. This is a reimbursement um, grant. So as you um, incur expenses, that allowable expenses, um, there's a process to request reimbursement for all those funds, but they don't have to be paid in advance. So we just want to see the invoices so that we can give you the check to, to, to pay the expenses down. Okay. I have a question. Great, we're gonna have another question. I have a question. Uh, can this be used for an open space project where there's no housing involved? Absolutely. We have a lot of really wonderful um, housing, uh, I'm sorry, open space, park projects, um, a lot of variety of uses. Um, so uh, definitely that's something that we uh, would be open to. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is there any uh, urban rural points different or just it depends on the site? Yes. That, that's actually a really good question. Um, we use uh, Cal EnviroScreen. Cal EnviroScreen, I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but we'll include it in yes. the email to you so you can take a look at um, where your cities um, lay in that, uh, in that database. It's basically um, a database that one of our other agencies came up with that overlay um, demographics that have to do with socioeconomic vulnerabilities. Um, along with pollution burdens. The higher the Calen virus screen score, um, the more automatic points you get just for being in that in that score. Um, there are areas in Central Valley that are very high and there are some that are low. Um, I'll, I'll, in addition to providing the link, um, I'll provide some uh, special some notes on instructions on how to use that and how to figure out uh, where you are. Um, we accept applications from from all different Calen virus screen scores. Um, when their Calen virus screen scores are a little bit lower, there's just some additional questions that have to be asked, but uh, that's getting into too much of the granularity. We'll, we'll share the information with you, and if it's something that you wanna talk further about, then I'd love to have a conversation about your specific sites, and then we can walk you through that um, Calen virus screen score process as well, and see what the numbers look like for your communities. Great. Sounds great. Really appreciate it. Any other questions? 
Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank yeah. you very much. We'll Bye. send off that information. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Okay, now consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item. Before action is taken, any public wish to remove anything? Any council member wish to remove anything? Seeing none, can I have a motion? So motion. motion. Second. <coughs> Roll call vote, please. Blades. Aye. Crump. Aye. Tafoya. Yes. No, Flores. Yes. Para. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Peacock. Yes. Thank you. Public hearing, unmet transit needs in Kern County. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Kern Council of Governments annually holds a public hearing to identify unmet transit needs and those that are reasonable to meet. And this is the last of 10 public hearings held this year throughout the county. The social services trans Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed the input from the prior meetings prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act funds to uses other than public transportation or pedestrian and bikeway facilities. Kern Cog is legally required under California Public Utilities Code Section 99401.5 to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified with it within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in the cities, rural communities of Kern, Golden Empire Transit District, and the city of Delano. Kerncox Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed the results of these public hearings. Large urbanized area operator, get the large UZA operator above 200,000, population above 200,000 held its unmet transit needs public hearing on February 15, 2022. The GET board found that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within its service area. Small urbanized operator. The city of Delano, count the county's small UZA population above 50,000 but below 200,000 held its unmet transit needs public hearing on March 22, 2022. The, the city council of Delano found that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within its service area. Rural transit operators. Kern Transit held its public hearing on June 14, 2022. The Kern C County Board of Supervisors found that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. The cities of Varvin, California City, Maricopa, McFarland, Ridgecrest, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Wasco held unmet transit public hearings between February and June 2022. None of these cities reported unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. At its August 17, 2022 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee, SSTAC, reviewed the countywide analysis of unmet transit needs provided by Kern Cog staff and the members of the SSTAC determined that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within the Kern County. Tonight is the public hearing for fiscal year 2022 and 2023's unmet transit needs assessment and determination, at which time Kern Cog should decide through resolution one of the following. One, there are no unmet transit needs that are there are no unmet transit needs. Two, there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. Or three, there are unmet transit needs, including those that are reasonable to meet. At this time, Mr. Snoddy would like to comment regarding the staff's recommended action. Thank you, Irene. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Until yesterday, we had received no responses from our ad in the paper 
but as of yesterday, we received a letter that qualifies as an unmet transit needs over in the Gossamer uh, area of Shafter. Uh, so we will have to send that over to Shafter and have them analyze it, and we'll come together and determine what it is. Is it an unmet need that is reasonable to meet, or is it unreasonable to meet? So tonight, I'd like you to open up the uh, public hearing, take uh, comments, and close the public hearing but delay your action on the resolution of finding until next month and give uh, Kerncock staff time to work with uh, Shafter and possibly Kern Transit to resolve the uh, unmet transit need. Thank you. With that, I will open the public hearing. Do we have any public comment on unmet transit needs? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion on continuance. To FOIA motion. Is this a roll call vote or? Everything's a roll call vote. Everything's a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. Uh, Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Para. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Flores. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans Report, District 6, Mr. Navarro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the committee. Um, before I get into projects, I just want to share you know, some good news with the Clean California. So it does look like there'll be a, a second cycle for Clean California local grants projects. Um, our, our district was very successful this last go around. I think we received 15 of the 34 applications. We got, a, I think, we, like we said, ranked third out of the 12 districts, only behind uh, District 7 in LA and District 4 in San Francisco. So, I mean, we, we held our own and um, great program. Won't be quite as much as the last cycle. Last cycle, I think, was like 296 million. This will be 100 million uh, for this go around. And we expect calls to go out in um, January with applications due in April. So, between now and then, if, um, you know, any applications that were not successful from your agencies uh, last go around, happy to sit down with your team to see how we can enhance those applications. Or if there's some new concepts we want to explore, that we feel would be competitive, um, even in advance of the guidance coming out, that um, probably would make use of that time and, and do so because we are, like I said, very interested in seeing what we can get accomplished this next round of cycle to the $100 million. Um, also, another reminder for a uh, call for reconnect reconnecting communities projects. Those applications are due October 13th. Um, there are some agencies that submitted to Caltrans call for projects for partnership applications as well as letters of support. So um, headquarters is reaching out to some of those agencies indicating projects that, are, that they view will compete well for partnership, which comes in different shapes or flavors. It could be just technical assistance. Um, there was not necessarily a financial commitment made. I know that caused some confusion for some of the agencies. So if you fall in that category, happy to have a follow-up conversation about how we could help support the application development. And then letter of support, I'm told, will be um, final analysis will be between now and the end of the month for letter of support for agencies that are pursuing reconnecting communities. So um, like I said, some have started going out in the last couple of days. So we'll see from that. Um, coming up pretty soon is our, our call for Caltrans planning grants as well. Um, it's a little delayed this year. Typically, we see that call um, coming out here in the early fall with applications due end of October, November. Um, we still haven't released the draft guidelines coming out yet, so that call is probably later towards the end of the year. There is a one-time augmentation this year for climate adaptation planning grants. Uh, about $50 million will be available for those. So, um, like I said, when that announcement comes out, be happy to meet with your teams. We'll be holding a hybrid workshop at the district um, with a virtual option, of course. Uh, to go over um, the new guidance as well as uh, happy to meet with your staff as far as application development. As for projects, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, uh, southbound at State Route 58 and 99, all the hot mix asphalt payment has been completed except for the final lift uh, to the future southbound Ming off ramp. Uh, contractor continues to work on the concrete barrier. 
Um, the block wall is complete between Ming Avenue and Bell Terrace Overcrossing, and that project is approximately 85% complete. We expect to have that project wrapped up this winter. The State Route 99 rehab project between Palm Avenue Overcrossing to Beardsley uh, Canal Bridge, that project is substantially complete. Uh, remaining th items are just punchless items such as sign installation and completing some striping. That project should be wrapped up in October. Uh, old US uh, 99 to White Lane, which is State Route 99 rehab project. Um, so activities going on currently between Panama Lane and White Lane include uh, the work has been shifted to two outside lanes and lowering the freeway lanes under the White Lane overcrossing is in progress and the White Lane northbound on-ramp is closed. Um, work between Union Avenue and Stair at 119, uh, currently removing the existing outside lane and pavement work is in progress. That project will be completed fall of next year. Uh, regret to inform on the high intensity uh, crosswalk, the Hawk system, we're still waiting on those poles despite all our efforts to get them there, get them expedited. Uh, the contracts are expecting the signal poles to be um, here in October. So there is kind of a, pro a temporary suspension of that work. So um, do what we can, but so we get the polls and the contract can wrap up that project. Uh, State Route 46 can, uh, Expressway Project Segment 4B. Um, so that's one where we had the failed girder. So girder erection started on September 6th. Uh, due to weather, um, they were only able to uh, erect one of the girders is in place. And so they'll continue to work on as weather permits. They did send out a commuter alert. So while they're installing the girders, there's about a 46 hour um, traffic stop for 46 hours during the erection of the girders. Uh, the contractor did start work from Lost Hills Road to the east end of the project. So all the sidewalk and ADA ramps have been completed from Bruning Avenue to Lost Hills Road. And the signal construction is complete at Lost Hills Road to Stay Route 46 with the red flasher on. The Stay Route 46 uh, 4C segment. Uh, this is the project uh, this near Lost Hill, same area. The project is currently a design phase. Uh, the right-of-way certification was obtained on, uh, right-of-way certification number two was obtained on August 25th. That project uh, will be ready to list for advertisement and will go to the December CTC meeting for vote. Uh, Stay Route 184 Sunset Roundabout um, near Weed Patch. That contract was approved. Uh, still some utility relocation work is in progress before construction can commence. We anticipate the construction started here in late, later this month or early October. Uh, the Morning Drive Rehab Project. This is a rehab project that incorporates ADA sidewalks, curb ramps, continuous bike lanes in both directions within the project limits. Uh, this project is still the design and right-of-way phase. Design is about 95% complete, and right-of-way acquisitions have been complete. Uh, remain, remaining right-of-way work is involves utility relocation, and expected completion of right-of-way work is in October. And then the project will be achieved ready to list status and we expect construction to start on that project in June of next year and that project will include uh, broadband enhancements as well and then lastly you know please just share that the front current bike path we've been working on for the last several months that project uh, did go federal highways and was authorized i think it was signed monday for the e76 so um that one was touch and go for a while I think I'll just make a plea for that one is, is, is really working closely with city staff so we can get that project. So we don't run the situation next year at the last minute because it literally was like the last week to get that thing signed. Um, so um, I just think in the future, like I said, we're just going to ask for the help with the city. And we'll make sure we're coordinating with the city to help deliver these projects. Um, you know, we knew going into it, the project, there was minimal risk, but we're still weighing those last agreements and documents. Um, don't want to do that again next year, of course. But uh, like I said, we'll continue to work with the city staff. and. And try to avoid these issues but also recognize a very important project so i'm glad we're able to get it done and we'll continue to coordinate with your effective teams and i think that applies to you know to all all the agencies i, I make that plea for all projects whether it's environmental phase or right away that we're working closely with your staff so we could be proactive and, and anything we do provide technical assistance um and like I said, it's two-way street right we got to do our part for coordination on the caltrans end but need to work closely with your cities as well to get these delivered we don't want to leave any federal funds on the table and like i said most of these projects are a multimodal project and we're talking about CMAC and ATP funding so uh, we would do whatever it takes to help you get delivered and I know on our end we've been a little understaffed but with with the IJ money we are starting to staff up and we're adding some more positions to our local assistants we're adding investment planning specialists and we're adding active transportation folks so um, we're going to be able to be a resource to the cities and, and county as well going forward so with that that completes my report I'm happy to answer any questions great thank you very much and I, I will Thank you on the on the front current canal and, and I will 
throw the city of Bakersfield under the bus because I believe they dropped the ball for a year or so, and, and that's why we were where we were at the end, and, and Diana Gomez stepped up, and you stepped up, and I really appreciate it and made it happen at the end. No, I thank you for that. Yeah, Diana did play a big role at Elevant at the headquarters, and um, we, we, we burned up quite a few favors on this one. So, <laughs> so like I said, we'll, we'll strive to do better for, for this coming up year. So thank you. I get it. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mr. Navarro? I have a comment. I want to thank Michael for uh, following through on installing some uh, um, better signage at uh, Highway 43 and um, 8th Street. It's not the ultimate answer, that, as, as you know, but uh, it's a step in the right direction. But I do want to thank you for uh, following through with that. It's uh, keeping our um, employees and any, anybody that crosses there a little bit safer. Yep, excellent. Thank you, Mary. And I know we're working with your team, and I know um, our maintenance operation deputy did provide a letter of support to pursue HSIP funding for some more enhancements for safety through the community. And then also I know on the other Wasco pavement job, um, you know, we, we got the C on one of them, but and I think the other one's pending signature, so I, I anticipate potentially signature on that second uh, Wasco rehabilitation project. Hopefully tomorrow my senior will be looking at oh, it. Oh, that's very good news. Thank so, you. So, thank you. Any, any other questions for Mr. Navarro? District 9. Yeah, very good. Thank you. This is Neil Peacock scanning in for Kirsten Hilton. Uh, a couple notes for you all. Um, you might be interested to hear that we are working on completing our TSEP application for the SR58 truck climbing lane. Uh, that's due to the CTC in October, and our first draft uh, for headquarters review is going to be due on the 20th. So, uh, working hard on getting that truck climbing lane funded. A um, couple other uh, items of note we just had a uh, kickoff field review meeting with the city of Tehachapi. Um, in county on the Golden Hills Complete Street Field Review Project. Um, that is a active transportation project over there in just outside of uh, Tehachapi in the uh, Golden Hills um, uh, subdivision area. Um, we met with the CSD and, the, and, uh, and county staff and city staff and, and so forth with all of our um, environmental and design experts out there in the field last week. A um, couple other notes. Uh, we met with the Highway Patrol on the 14th to discuss some traffic coordination issues for the upcoming air show out there at the Edwards Air Force Base on October 15th and 16th. Um, so we're coordinating uh, traffic control and uh, safety issues for, for that big event. Uh, regarding projects, uh, we're looking to restart the Cummings Valley Road project in October. And um, a couple other project updates here. The Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project on State Route 14 be, be, between Rosamond and, and Mojave um, has resumed. Uh, they're working currently on the inside southbound lane, and there's a speed limit uh, controls uh, through the construction zone. The California City Traffic Brakes Project on State Route 14 um, is, is also underway with intermittent traffic brakes to allow utility crews to cross their utility wires over the highway. Uh, that's taking place Monday through Wednesday from 6 to 6. The Crane Break, break, crane break Utility Project on SR-178 um, is taking place Monday through Friday, 6 to 6. And there's going to be one-way traffic control. So unfortunately, with that project, drivers do need to experience or expect a 20-minute uh, delays. Uh, a couple other projects where uh, minimal or no delays are expected, the Tehachapi Guardrail Project on SR-58 between Broom Road, Road and Cameron Canyon Road uh, will be taking place Tuesday through Thursday from 7.30 to 1.30. The Banducci Road Chip Seal Project on SR-202 is taking place Tuesday through Friday from 8 to 3. And the Jacks Ranch Signal Work Project on SR-178 at uh, Jacks Ranch Road in Ridgecrest is taking place Monday through Friday, 6 to 4.30. Um, as you might have heard, just a couple other notes before I wrap, uh, that we experienced um, some significant road damage um, out in the, the eastern Sierra from uh, storms, monsoon, monsoon season rains that took place on the 13th. Um, SR-190 in particular out in Inyo was, was damaged as a result, um, the, the, um, it remains closed from Olancha to Stovepipe Wells and crews are continuing to assess damage uh, caused by the storm throughout the area. 
Um, the only other note I have for you that I don't think Michael covered in terms of headquarters was um, that uh, Caltrans is embarking upon an update of the regional transportation plan guidelines. Um, Aaron and company are probably well aware, but that will be kicking off in October. This is a uh, CTC um, guideline document that directs how the regional transportation plan update process goes, basically. Uh, they're going to be forming a work group, and um, that work group is going to be formed up in November, December timeframe with a series of public workshops happening um, this coming winter. Um, with uh, an expected release of the new RTP guidelines come March and public workshops to follow. Um, they're hoping to have the regional handbook um, update out by the end of the year as well. So those two documents, the regional planning handbook and the RTP guidelines are um, kind of important for the regional planning process. Um, those are the updates I have for you. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. I'm sure Mr. Phil Smith has some comments. Hi, Phil Smith from Patchby. What was that document you're sending to CTC for approval or for review for the truck climbing okay, lanes? So that, is our, that is our grant application to the Trade Corridor Enhancement Program for the SR-58 truck climbing lane. So it's a Trade so Corridor CTC Enhancement Mr. Grant. Okay. Mayor Smith, that, that's yeah, a state they, yeah. grant. So but this one of, is one a of state the many grant. funding programs that we've targeted for the, the SR-58 truck climbing lane. I certainly appreciate every effort you're doing on that. Thank you. Very good. Uh, and, and heads up, we will be asking for uh, letters of support as part of that process. We will certainly send every letter that we can get <laughs> towards you. Thank you. Any other questions for District 9? Thank you very much, then. Uh, Executive Director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I'll try to be brief, but I have uh, about six or seven items I'd like to get through. Um, CT California Transportation Commission met August 17th and 18th. The main uh, highlight that I'd like to bring to your attention is um, the augmentation of the ATP program. Um, the Newsom administration added over $1.5 billion to that program. Uh, as an example, Kern Cog's MPO share, and if you, most of you are familiar with, we all compete for the state share, then um, the money flows down to the MPOs. Our MPO share will be $16.8 million this cycle. That's more than triple. Uh, what it has ever been before. So uh, thank you for getting your projects in. Uh, there's a high likelihood that many, if not all, of our projects will be funded. The next CTC meeting is October 12th and 13th. Um, there will also be a CTC meeting in Southern California in December, which I plan on attending in person. We have several items on that agenda that are um, very important to Kern County. On August 25th, uh, in this boardroom, we held a meeting with um, High Speed Rail Chairman and CEO and several managers. Thank you to Mayor Prout, Mayor Reyna, Mayor Phil Smith, Mayor Goh, and Supervisor Scrivener for attending that meeting. Um, I, I'm, I'm taking a let's wait and see uh, attitude on uh, on. Uh, if we if we made any progress, uh, board members are certain you you are certainly welcome to give your thoughts uh, whenever you want on that. But uh, I appreciated them actually coming physically meeting with us. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath, and I'll just leave it at that. Kern County Fair is September 21st to October 2nd this year. Kern Cog will have a booth in person. Please stop by, and we'll give you some swag and. You can uh, join us for t talking to the public. Uh, Kern Cog is proud to announce that the San Joaquin Valley Air District and Snyder's Cyclery are once again the major sponsors of Commute Kern's 2022 Rideshare Week celebration, which is October 3rd to 7th. Anyone logging their rideshare trips during that week on commutekern.org will be eligible to win a bicycle and other great prizes. More information can be found at commutekern.org. I'm sorry. 
Uh, during the month, we've continued meetings on State Route 99 and 58 missing connectors. Um, good news is, is City of Bakersfield is going to fund the full design on one of those missing ramps. Uh, continued discussions on Union Avenue and 204, 7 Standard and 43. Uh, I'm very happy to report that um, Caltrans has agreed uh, to put shoulders on Route 33, something that I've been pushing for for uh, about a year along with Supervisor Couch and other um, statewide elected officials. So thank you Caltrans for agreeing to do that. It will absolutely save lives. Um, continue to meet on uh, State Route 46. Um, I was out in Lost Hills today and saw that there are now two girders in place and hopefully the additional five will be placed within the next uh, Week those those girders are over 400,000 pounds and they cannot be placed if the wind is over 10 miles an hour. That's how calm it has to be. So it is a very slow, deliberate um, operation. Uh, I am uh, also continue to uh, meet on the truck climbing lanes on Route um, 58. I'm sorry to report that this morning. Um, I was notified that the, both the federal grants that we applied for for the truck climbing lanes jointly with Caltrans District 9 and the um, uh, application that Kern Cog uh, submitted ourselves for 58 and 99 were not funded. So if you're interested to see what projects were funded nationwide, um, that list came out today. There was only one project in California funded and it's for um, border crossing in San Diego, Ote Mesa, for about $100 million. <laughs> uh, and I'll, uh, I'll end this report with uh, some good news that Michael um, shared earlier about the Friant Kern project being funded. That puts um, Kern Cog d federal delivery at over 100% for the year. So congratulations to all your staffs, as, as you know. When we deliver over 100% of our federal share, we're using other people's money to fund our projects. And that's the way I like to roll. Uh, with that, uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman, uh, subject to any of your questions. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Kern Cog meeting. Roll calls the same. The only the only update is that uh, the uh, alternate from TAF, Josh Bryant, signed on. Great, thank you. Uh, public comment rules are the same. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Any public comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, any council members wish to pull a consent item? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. I'll move we approve consent. Second. Roll call vote. Okay, Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reina. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. And Bryant. Josh Bryant. Josh Bryant. I can't hear you, Josh. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's a yes. <laughs> Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. Just one quick item. Next week is the annual Valley Voice trip to Washington, D.C. First time in person since uh, 2019. I'll be leaving Sunday and returning Thursday and give you a report next month. In your folders this evening is the letter that um, Mr. Snoddy referenced uh, from the resident in Shafter who has uh, what may be uh, determined to be an unmet transit need, still to be determined. 
timeline uh, covers September 2022 through December. A flyer from Kern Community College District talking about electric vehicle charging installation training. Rideshare 2022 Rideshare Week, October 3rd to 7th flyer. And a flyer for the Kern Transportation Foundation's annual conference, which I attended last uh, year. So did Michael and I, Michael Navarro from Caltrans and I were on a panel together along with several other transportation professionals. That will be October 6th at um, Hodel's in Bakersfield. A um, San Joaquin um, Valley REAP uh, flyer on accessory dwelling units. Those um, training sessions and information sessions have been very well attended um, by cities and counties uh, up and down the valley. California Economic Summit this year will be held in Bakersfield October 27th and 28th. It's a copy from the um, from their website. Uh, I plan on attending along with a couple of staff members and a uh, schedule of cash uh, disbursements for June of 2022. Subject to any of your questions, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just have a comment real quick, Chair. Yes. Uh, the Economic Summit uh, get plans on uh, providing a shuttle uh, between downtown and Old Town Kern. Uh, the 18th Street Corridor, I think, is going to be the route. Um, they're working those logistics out with the city, so hopefully it will happen. Um, I'm, I'm confident it will. So it will also be kind of a pilot project on if there is a need or a want for that service to continue. There, there are several tours associated with, um, with that economic summit too. Any other comments, member statements? I have a question. Sure. As uh, some of you heard today, uh, I started to ride a bike, and um, although I ride mostly on dirt and gravel roads, um, I do have to use some of the Wasco streets, and the bike lanes are really in bad shape, they're faded, and so where can we get some funding for bike lanes and also, you know, painting them so beautiful as they have been uh, painted here in Bakersfield with uh, green paint? <laughs> there, there, uh, Mayor, there, there are literally billions of dollars available for bicycle and pedestrian improvements. Um, the, the largest of those sources is, is ATP and uh, WASC. Wasco traditionally submits several projects. Uh, you can also use your, your federal transportation dollars that you traditionally use on streets. It's not restricted to just street improvements. You can make bike path improvements. You can uh, add bike lanes. Uh, a street <coughs> just around the corner from my house, I think it's uh, Panorama Drive, was recently overlaid by the city of Bakersfield as an example. and when they were done resurfacing the street, they restriped it um, to have less lanes for cars and more facilities for bicycles. That's an option that um, you can, that all the cities and the county can do relatively inexpensively. It's just a change in the striping, especially in, in this case, if you're familiar with that area, there, there was no need for two lanes of, of vehicle traffic because there was restrictions on either end. And there, the, the final product is a much safer route for bicyclists. So uh, the, the short answer is there's more money than ever. There, there's more money for bicycle projects out there, unfortunately, than there is uh, money to fix safety problems like uh, connecting Edwards Air Force Base, as an example, to Cal City. Thank you. If, if I can just make a comment on that too, when uh, Bike Bakersfield goes out to Wasco and Shafter, uh, the biggest, we, we get the most kids that come to th those two places. Wasco is a place that we get, and we also get the um, local police, everybody comes out to, to help out with those uh, rodeos in, in Wasco and in Shafter. So. 
I want to I, I want to thank you all for for doing that work with us. Thank you for the comment. The mayor is there also. Yeah, <laughs> good so community <laughs> support. So, so Ms. Ms. Parr, uh, does the the c current contract we have with Bike Breakers Field include a workshop in Wasco? Yes, they do. And actually, we're out in Shafter today at the library. I have yeah. something to add to that as well. Uh, I am planning a bike ride in Wasco, which will be happening either late September, early October. I'm working with Tony Renteria uh, to have that this happen. Unfortunately, in Wasco, uh, recently, we had uh, two collisions of bicyclists with uh, motor vehicles. Uh, one resulted in the death of uh, an adult male, and the other one was a, a kid uh, that um, fortunately uh, suffered minor injuries. But there is a need uh, to educate uh, our residents as to the right type of equipment to have while riding a bike, uh, and as well as uh, the uh, observing of traffic signals. Thank you. With uh, this, with this grant that um, Mr. Hakimi was talking about, that's what we plan on doing in in all these outlying areas: is go and and have uh, safety classes, mechanics classes. Um, really, really get in the community there at the libraries, and and try to touch a lot of, not just kids but adults also, so that they can get better equipment, and um, some education on how to ride and what to look for when they're riding. I don't want to forget. To, I'm sorry, Kathy. I don't want to forget to mention that I'm also working with the elementary school administration and also with uh, Tony Renteria to have a separate uh, safety uh, class uh, type uh, of event uh, so that uh, all the kids uh, and any adults that wish to attend uh, can learn uh, proper uh, bike safety. Thank Great. you. Ms. Uh, Trout. Yes, I'd like to mention the fact after the high-speed rail meeting, I did have a few words with uh, Garth and um, I invited him to come for a tour of Shafter, and lo and behold, a couple weeks after that, he had a staff call, and he is scheduled to come uh, to Shafter on October the 4th, and uh, we'll see what happens at our meeting. Great. The meeting that we had here was interesting to me. It was, it was different than any other kind of meeting that I've attended or been part of, and. Uh, yeah, I'm anxious to see what, what we get from Garth in this time. Maybe progress. Can only hope. Any other comments? We are adjourned. Um. <laughs> After we're adjourned, we're going to have some awards. <laughs> 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 Mr. Snotty, 20 years of dedicated service to the Kern Council of Governments. <laughs> <laughs> you need, uh, man, 20 years, that's like nothing. That's like nothing. Thank you very much. I remember when he showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Only like yesterday, Mr. Robert Ball. For 30 years, of a year older than Mr. Snotty, 30 years of dedicated service to Kern Council of Government. Yes, Thank you. Uh, he must have just been a baby when he started. <laughs> hey, Phil, he's been, he's been here since that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We are finished.